Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we are going to be doing some technical analysis on our favorite cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, because in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys why a massive breakout is coming to Bitcoin relatively soon. And by relatively soon, I do mean in the next couple of days. As you guys can see on the chart right now, there is such a tight trading range on Bitcoin right now. The tension on Bitcoin is palpable right now guys you can cut it with a butter knife bitcoin is so tightly coiled there is so much tension in this market volume has dropped off volatility has dropped off over 20 times not 20 percent not 200 percent 20 times volatility has dropped off from a trading range of between 40 to 60 percent down to two percent all the while, longs and shorts most certainly have not gone down over an order of magnitude. Volume has not gone down over an order of magnitude. Interest in the space and people and liquidity and volume in the space has not gone down over an order of magnitude. But volatility on Bitcoin has. That means that there is a lot of tension holding together an even larger amount of explosiveness. And when Bitcoin finally does break one of these moving averages, we're going to see one of two things. The most obvious is that we're going to see a massive breakout or... Bitcoin trades sideways, which doesn't really seem to make any sense based on what I just said, but we're going to explain that here today. Before we get started with all that today, guys, there is just one thing I want to mention, and that is that CT2A is currently on sale. If you guys want to learn everything you need to know about technical analysis in one place so that you can hit the ground running, trading, investing, and profiting in these markets, I highly encourage you checking out the Academy linked in the description down below. There's a full 14-day money-back refund guarantee. Yes, we do accept Bitcoin payments, but we will be discussing more on that at the end of this video. For now, though, guys, without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. I don't think you guys actually got a good look at my mug yesterday. Um, this is the new mug. Someone was like, oh, Jeb, you got a biohazard mug. No, it, it, it's a Bitcoin mug, actually. It says Toxic Bitcoin Maximalist on it. Check it out, guys. Ooh. Every piece, every piece, every cup of coffee you put into this mug tastes better because it has a Bitcoin logo on it right there. Check that out. Whew, that's some good tasting Bitcoin Joe. Guys, let's just go ahead and jump onto the chart and get started. What are we doing here? Guys, as I said in today's intro, Bitcoin's trading range has massively narrowed. Back here in the beginning of March, Bitcoin was jumping around 10-20% in the span of just a couple of days. Bitcoin in this instance rallied 43% in 14 days. That's 3% a day. Literally just buying and holding Bitcoin for a month would have brought you a 35% return on one trade with no worries in the world. But now what are we seeing, guys? Bitcoin's biggest move in the last couple of weeks was this movement right here, where Bitcoin moved 6% in 7 hours. yippee ki -yay, mamacita, that's so cool and all. But we came right back down into that trading range. And now what are we seeing? We're seeing not one, but two things that are very important. Number one, we're seeing that there's vastly, vastly lower volatility than there was before. Why was there so much volatility down here, guys? It's because of the exact same fundamentals and technicals that are in the market right now. Only the technicals are stopping Bitcoin from using that volatility and moving with that volatility because we're constricted between the downtrending level of resistance and the uptrending level of support. All of the technical and fundamental factors that were driving this volatility are still here. We are being restricted by moving averages. We are being restricted by trend lines. And when they break, volatility will return more than likely. We'll discuss the other case later on in the video. But the second thing we need to talk about here on the short-term trend is this movement that happened a little over 24 hours ago. Guys, you may have noticed this happen on the hourly chart. If we go down to like the five minute chart, you actually see that this was a really interesting move on Bitcoin. It was a hard and fast rejection. Bitcoin looked like it was rallying, looked like it was going to break out here about a day and a half ago and boom, crashed. Now, is this like a soothsayer or an early warning sign or a profit teller that we're going to fall through the floor here in a little while and that we're bearish? Not necessarily. It just means that Bitcoin tried to release that volatility and it got constricted by that very strong level of resistance. Remember, guys, this was like an hour long trend hitting a three year downtrend. So, of course, we were going to get rejected from it without more strength than that. But the point here is, is that Bitcoin bulls tried to bring volatility back and the bear said, nope, get back in your place. And we returned exactly where we started. 
when you see movements like this in markets, guys, this is almost always an indicator that a breakout is coming because it means that people and bulls and traders are trying to bring volatility back to the market, but they have been rejected. They normally don't get rejected on a return to volatility many times. Normally, when you see something like this happen, especially considering out on the hourly chart, it filled up the consolidation pattern entirely, as you can see right there. Normally, when you see a candlestick like that with massive shadows in either direction, some people call it a Darth Maul candlestick. When you see that candlestick, it almost always means that the consolidation pattern is fast approaching its conclusion. And well, as you guys can see, depending on how you draw this downtrending level of resistance, we're either two to maybe four or five days away from the apex of these two trend lines that we've been respecting for three months now. There are two scenarios, and the first scenario has a subset. First of all, you have the idea that Bitcoin breaks out. If Bitcoin breaks out here, because of what we talked about in the intro, there's still a lot of liquidity. There's still a lot of open interest on the books over on leverage exchanges. There's still a lot of volume. There's still a lot of retail interest that was here two and a half months ago that hasn't left. But the volatility has dropped, which means that when Bitcoin has a breakout, all of that volatility is going to come back in respect of those technicals and fundamentals that are still here in the market. So when Bitcoin breaks out, either bullish or bearish, it's going to be a big one if it's an actual breakout. But then you have the second scenario, which is we trade sideways and there isn't a return to volatility. But that doesn't seem to make any sense with what I just said, so why am I saying it? Well guys, the fact of the matter is all of those technicals are still there, but it may also be that the bulls and the bears are at a deadlock right now, and Bitcoin could simply trade sideways out of this consolidation pattern. Maybe everybody's talking about bullish and bearish breakouts, but in fact what ends up happening is that Bitcoin just stays boring for a couple of months through the summer and trades sideways. That can happen in one of two ways. Either one, the bulls and the bears are very strong, but they're equally matched, or they're very weak and they're equally matched. Either way, it results in low volatility because the bulls and the bears are very evenly matched and then we just have to wait for some kind of fundamental or technical to come along and break that stalemate. I don't think that's going to happen, but that is a possible scenario and I want to make that clear to you guys. I, however, think that Bitcoin is going to break out. And let me show you what I have a feeling may happen. Now, I want to emphasize, this is a feeling. This is not what the technicals are telling me. The technicals and my feeling, my intuition, have two conflicting opinions right now on what's going to happen to Bitcoin. The technical analysis, the fundamental analysis, everything I can see is more or less predicting that Bitcoin either breaks to the upside right now or it breaks to the downside and then breaks to the upside again later. I have a feeling that Bitcoin is actually going to break bearish in the short term here and then it's going to come back and rally from there. Almost as if you're kind of like jumping off a diving board onto a trampoline and then bouncing from the trampoline up to break the resistance because you couldn't have just jumped straight through the resistance. You had to go and get a little bit of a springboard. A better analogy of that would actually be astronomical to get a probe either very close to the sun or to the very far reaches of the solar system. Typically what you have happen is you have something called a gravitational assist where a probe will either get slingshot around Mars or Jupiter and get slinged and flung and thrown off into the in, into the cosmos out into the out into space or it'll get flung right down into a uh, lower orbit around the sun because our probes just don't have the delta V to be able to do either one of those. So they use something called a gravitational assist from different planets in the solar system. I'm thinking something similar might actually end up happening on Bitcoin right now, where Bitcoin falls, uses that downwards velocity and bounces like a ball, uses all of that extra momentum that it had from falling and bouncing to actually break the resistance. Because think about it, guys. If Bitcoin has no room to get a start, if Bitcoin, this we talked about this analogy like two weeks ago, some of you guys will remember. If Bitcoin is a car and it's trying to break through a wall and you need to be going 100 miles an hour to break through that concrete block wall, but you only have like five feet to get up to speed, I mean, unless you're in a Bugatti Chiron, you're not gonna break through that wall. You need a little bit of run up. So maybe Bitcoin falls here, pulls back a little bit, then bounces around one of our levels of support. I'm not even going to get into those. There's a lot of them down there. And then it actually has a runway to get some exuberance, to get some speed, and then come up and test this downtrend of resistance. Because guys, like I said, the fundamentals and the technicals are feeling very bullish on Bitcoin. It feels like Bitcoin should be able to break out here. But remember, this is not just any ordinary trend line. This trend line is three years in the making. This is huge. This is literally the largest trend line that Bitcoin has ever tested as resistance in the history of the entire blockchain industry. Full stop. I mean, that no altcoin holds comparison either. This is a Guinness World Record is what this is, and Bitcoin is trying to break through it. Is Bitcoin really going to be able to break through it with $20 of run-up? I don't know. I think Bitcoin's bullish enough to be trading above $10,000, 
but this is some very strong resistance. So I think that's what's been confusing me lately is that I feel, yeah, Bitcoin's strong enough to be above $10,000, but I also feel like, hey, wait a minute, Bitcoin feels like it's going to break to the downside here. Those things are contradicting each other. But maybe it's a fact that Bitcoin needs to break to the downside, come to something like the 50 daily moving average or the 200 daily moving average, bounce off of it with exuberance. Maybe some kind of news story comes in at a perfect time. And then Bitcoin has a run up to actually break this downtrending level of resistance. Notice guys, Bitcoin had a run up to test it right over here. We got all the way to it. And where did we stop exactly on that resistance? Even though Bitcoin was moving 3% a day in this time period. Bitcoin had too far of a run and was starting to run out of gas when it hit the wall. So it had to pull back. What if Bitcoin has about five to 10% of room to run to hit that downtrend of resistance, would it then be in a position to actually break it? I would love to hear your opinions on that in the comments section down below because I think this breakout might actually end up being quite a bit more complicated than we originally thought it was. Maybe it's not that Bitcoin just needs to break bullish or bearish. Maybe it's that Bitcoin needs to break to the downside, bounce, and then use that bounce to actually be able to hit and break through the resistance. But guys, I want to hear your take on that in the comment section down below. What do you think? Do you think Bitcoin is just going to smash the resistance and head straight for the moon? Or do you think Bitcoin bulls are going to head for the hills and Bitcoin's going to break to the downside? If you think it's going to break to the downside, do you think Bitcoin's going to break down, bounce, and go up? Or do you think it's going to be the end of this uptrend? Love to hear your take on all of that in the comment section down below. Guys, there is something very important that I need to address here at the end of the video, and that would be the topic of people impersonating me. I have an impersonator on Instagram, and I have an email impersonator of me. Let me make myself very clear here. Unless you're a member of CT2A, there is absolutely no reason that I will ever DM you or message you first. It's not that I don't want to talk to you. It's just that there's 43,000 of you guys now. And I just, I, I don't go around messaging all of you for even people that are in CT2A. I, I don't remember the last time I ever messaged a Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy member first. It's normally only in response to you guys reaching out to me. It is extremely rare. Probably, I don't even know if it's ever happened once that I've ever reached out to any of you guys unless you reached out to me first. So please understand, there is not an official Instagram for this channel. I used to have one, and yes, I did post to it two years ago, and yes, there is a person impersonating me over on Instagram that has perfectly duplicated that Instagram account that is not real and DMing my followers. And also please understand that there is a scumbag impersonating my email with a very similar email. I will not message you first. I will not try and get you signed up for 1% a day or 3% a day. The only product I sell is CT2A and First Cohort. Those are the only two things I sell. I don't even use affiliates on a lot of things. I'm not going to reach out to you first. Please, if someone does, report the account. I will make it blatantly publicly clear if I try to do that. So don't get scammed, guys. I will be using the full force of the law to deal with this. I take it very seriously. It's an attack on my reputation. And if I figure out who's doing it, there will be criminal charges pressed. That is a guarantee. Do not try me if you're watching this video. Anyway, guys, believe me, I wanted to get a lot more heated about that than I did. But uh, I didn't want to make the video too sad. And I just want to protect you guys. It really upsets me when people are trying to take advantage of the people I care about, which are my subscribers, you guys. It really pisses me off. It really rubs me the wrong way when people do that. And it makes me very angry. As I said, if anyone tries to impersonate me and anyone tries to use my name or anyone's name for that matter and I figure out who you are to try and scam my subscribers, you will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law if I find out who you are. And I can find out who you are because the internet is not anonymous, you idiot. Anyway, guys, like I said, I just want to protect you. It really upsets me when people do that. Don't get scammed. There's a lot of idiots in cryptocurrency. Don't fall for... Some of them that are trying to make a living doing something immoral. I don't know how people sleep with themselves at night like that. Anyway, guys, before we go, I do just want to first mention the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. As you guys know, there's a lot of expansion coming to this channel relatively soon. There's a lot of good things that we're trying to do to bring you guys more content. And CT2A is what makes that possible, guys. CT2A is the one and pretty much only sponsor of this channel. If you want to learn technical analysis, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. There's a great place to do it. It's linked in the description down below. It's called the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. We have nearly 2,000 students that have enrolled and and they are loving it. Let me ask you something, because there are some people that say, oh, courses are a scam. If courses are a scam, let me ask you, go type Crypto Jebs course into Google and look for reviews. Like you can join our Discord server down below and talk to our student and get reviews from them. Type it into Google. See what you find. If there are 2,000 people, nearly 2,000, there's about 1,800 people that have gone through the academy. If there's that many people that have gone through the course and it wasn't a worthwhile product, don't you think people would be posting about it on the internet? On the internet, There's only like three or four search results that you're going to find for anyone talking about it on the internet. Because it's a good product. If people didn't like it, people would be complaining. I guarantee you, they don't. Why not? Because it's a good product. 
If you're interested in learning technical analysis, it's a great idea to do so. You can use the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy linked in the description down below. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. There are a lot of great things coming to the channel. I'm really looking forward to sharing them all with you. I do, before we go, just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.